So today we're going to be going over experiment 7, polarimetry, and we're just going to briefly go over the key concepts and the math behind this lab. So polarimetry, the first part of this lab, you're going to get familiar with the polarimetry machine and using it with LabQuest. And then we're also going to be using this machine to look at the specific rotation or the observed rotations of four different sugars and then using the height, concentration, and observed rotation to find the specific rotation of these four sugars. Those sugars include sucrose, fructose, galactose, and glucose. So I wrote out the Oates Law because this is the math we're going to be using in this lab. So I'm going to briefly explain the variables. So this is going to be the observed rotation. This is what you find when you use the polarimetry machine, which we'll go over later. The specific rotation, this is what you'll be solving for. This is for height. It's going to be in deci or deci deci centimeters. So uh, for every 10 centimeters, it's going to be one deci centimeter. And then you'll also be finding, you also have the concentration. So concentration, it's going to be grams over milliliters. You'll have to solve for that as well. So for finding the specific rotation, we actually have to rearrange the Oates law. So this will be the specific rotation. The observed rotation is going to be in the numerator, and then height and concentration will be in the denominator. So these are the sugars we're using today, sucrose, galactose, and fructose. Um, not pictured here is glucose, but we will also be using that. We also are going to utilize some DI water. But a uh, picture here are some of the stock solutions we have. We have 30% sucrose, 20%, and 10%. And then we also have 10% glucose, 10% fructose, and 10% galactose. And then we also have our four unknown samples. And then right here are the cells which go into the polymetry machine. Um, one thing to note about these cells is that they do uh, run in reverse order, so they go from 1 up to 12 instead of uh, like 12 to 1. Okay, before doing any lab experiment, we need to protect ourselves, use lab coat, gloves, and then a full pan, no ankle open, and your toe must be closed, and use face mask because of this COVID-19, and wear the safety glasses. Now we are ready to go to perform our experiments. Now we're going to prepare our 30% sucrose solution. So we're going to do that by adding 15 grams of the sucrose into a 50 milliliter volumetric flask. And then we're going to dilute it by adding water. So the first step would, to be, uh, would be to measure out the um, 15 grams of sucrose. So I'm going to start by just tearing our weigh boat. And then we're going to try to get as close to 15 grams as we can. It's going to be a lot. And we have to be careful while you are weighing. Spill. Don't dispel, otherwise ants will come. Yeah. And if you do spill, make sure to try to sweep it up. Mm. I might go. try to take a little bit out. Oh, right. This will be good. Just a little bit more? <laughs> Beep. Yep. Oh. Great. Okay. So the next step after that would be to put it into our volumetric flask. So it would be really messy if we just poured it directly in there. So we're going to take our weigh boat, just pour it in. So the next step is to add the water to dilute the solution. So I'm just going to add a bit. So we have to add some water first yeah. to dissolve slowly. 
Maybe we should remove this funnel. Yeah, here. the flask, or the, I'm sorry, the funnel seems to make it go a little bit on slower. So it will take some time to dissolve first. So as you can see here, the sugar, or I'm sorry, the sucrose is almost dissolved in the water, but it's not quite. So we're gonna keep shaking it and um, you can just shake it back and forth, around, down, like that. Yeah, it's so still, we are shaking. Yeah, like And it is kind of a tedious process, but you wanna make sure it's all dissolved. Okay, so at this point, it's pretty close to being ready to top, but we're just gonna shake it a few more times. Um, so now we're going to top this with water up to this line. This line is the 50 milliliter line. Okay, so our solution is ready. Yeah, so uh, this is our 30% sucrose solution. And from here we can dilute to make 20% or 30%. Hello, so I'm gonna show you how to set up the polarimetry machine. This is our polarimetry machine. This is the lab quest. We have to connect the polarimetry machine to the lab quest. All of these have labels on it. So this is channel one. So this is gonna go here in channel one. And this is DIG one. So this one's gonna go up here at the top and all of them are labeled, see? So you'll just insert it here. And then you'll go to this tab and you'll come up to this blank screen. And that is done for now. You'll see that it says illumination. That's what you want it to say. And so the first thing that we'll have to do setting up is we're gonna have to do a blank run. So when you're putting so the first thing that we have to do when using the polar imaging machine is we're going to have to run a blank. And we do this with DI water. So when you run the blank, you have to fill it up to 10 centimeters. I'll take it a moment. And then we have to insert it into the polarimetry machine and you do this gently because these clips are very fragile. So when you run the polarimetry machine, you actually need two people. One person is going to press this play button here on the lab quest, while the other person is going to rotate this in a circle. When you do this rotation, you wanna make sure you're not doing it too fast or too slow. You want a good medium motion. Ready, Rachel? Yep, and go. And then we have to stop it? It uh, just stops by itself. So when you're doing, when you're trying to find the observed rotation, you're going to take this first peak, you're gonna start at the bottom, and then you're gonna drag all the way over it so it kind of aligns with where you initially touched it. You're gonna to go to Analyze, and then you're gonna to go to Curve Fit Illumination, and then you're gonna choose the Gaussian for best line fit. And then you're gonna see, look at B. B is going to be your observed rotation so for the is, blank. This for is for blank. blank water. For the blank, for blank water. Okay, so this is specific rotation for DI water. And now we are going to do for sugar. Mm -hmm. So for the next step, we're gonna be trying to find the observed rotation for sucrose. So we use 10% sucrose in the first part of the experiment. And you have to pour in the sucrose up to 10 centimeters. Exactly. <laughs> well. And then you'll put this into the polarimetry machine like you did the DI water. Gently. The 
this off to the side. And then we'll be doing the same process where you have to push play while I spin the top of the polar energy machine. Ready? Mm-hmm. So when this uh, illumination will stop, it has stopped. So then it will be done, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll be doing the same method for this one. So you're going to take the beginning of the peak and then the end of the peak. Go to analyze, curve fit, illumination, Gaussian, and then write down the V number. So I already wrote down the angle blank. This is going to be the angle sample, and that'll be 182.5. For that one. So one of the components of this lab is changing the height of the solution in the cell. So there are several different heights you would be doing, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to show you uh, us decreasing from 10 centimeters to 8 centimeters. So we gently remove from here, avoiding tapping the top or pulling on the clamps. Um, right now it's at 10 centimeters and we're going to decrease it to eight centimeters. Again, one thing to note is that this is centimeters and not milliliters. So, require a lot of solution oh, to remove. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Okay. Now you can place it inside. Yes. Gently with both hands. And then you're going to write it again using the lab press. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Starting. It stops. And then you'll be just doing the same process where you do the beginning of the peak, analyze, curve fit, illumination, and then you record the B. So it's 181.61 for 8 centimeters. And then you'll just do that for the 4 centimeters, or 6 centimeters, 4 centimeters, and 2 centimeters. So this is for 8 centimeters, right? Mm -hmm. I put like a sad 8 next to it, but... So it's 10 centimeters. Okay, great. So we continued the same process by decreasing the height, so we went from 10 to eight, six, four, and two, using that 10% sucrose solution. And then we recorded all of the B values for each one. We'll be using this v, B value to calculate for the observed rotation of sucrose. So to find the observed rotation for sucrose, we have to use our sample, our angle sample, and our angle blank. So the blank that we had done with the DI water is 176.2 degrees. And then for each, we recorded for each height for sucrose, I'm gonna only do the 10 centimeter, eight centimeter, but it was 182.5 and 181.61. To find the observed rotation, we have to take the sample, 182.5, and subtract it from the blank, 176.2 to get 6.3 for your observed rotation. Repeat the same process, I did it for eight centimeters and we got a 5.41. And you'll just do the same process as you decrease in height, and you should have a decrease in observed rotation as you decrease the height. So now we're going to look at how concentration affects absorbed, uh, I'm sorry, observed uh, rotation. So we already did the 10% sucrose, and now we're going to take a look at the 20% sucrose. So we're gonna start by um, putting it into the cell. And we're just gonna put it at the 10 centimeters. We aren't going to do that uh, 10 centimeter, eight centimeter, six centimeter thing. So we have our cell labeled with centimeters, not milliliters. And we're just going to pour it into 10. 
be sure not to spill it. That is important. A little too much. And again, remember the best way to measure is looking directly level with the uh, eye level. Yes. So we're just going to put it back into the machine and run it again. So gently. doing the same process as all the other ones. Curve it. And then you're going to be recording that knee value, so 188.97. So we've repeated the process again with the 30% sucrose, and we got these uh, degree numbers for our observed rotation. For 10 centimeter for, height? Uh, all at 10 centimeter height. <laughs> Once again, repeating kind of the same process to finding this observed rotation, but this time we're using the different concentrations of sucrose. So we have 10%, 20%, and 30%, and then we have the B values for each concentration. So we're doing the same thing when we're trying to find this observed rotation. We're going to take the sample for the 10%, 182.5, and subtract it from our blank, 176.2, and we get 6.3. As we do it for each concentration, you'll notice that there's an increase in the observed rotation. So for the final part of the experiment, we're going to be finding the observed rotations for four different sugars. These are going to be all at 10%, and they're only going to fill up to about a little bit over, it's around 4.5 centimeters. So we're going to be repeating the same process of filling it up and then using the lab quest to help find the B value so we can calculate for the observed rotation. And we're going to be doing that for each sugar. So for the other part of this final part, you're going to be picking two unknowns and you're gonna be putting them in the polarimetry machine, trying to find the B value, and you're gonna be using the B, or the observed rotation value to calculate their specific rotation, and you'll be solving using this equation that's been rearranged as Bio's law. And then you're going to see the ones that you've calculated for sucrose, glucose, galactose, and fructose, and you're gonna also calculate the specific rotation for your unknowns, and you're gonna compare the unknowns to the calculated specific rotation that you did for the known sugars. And you're gonna to try to identify the unknowns. Okay, so we found the B for each of the 10% of the sugars. And so I took the B value for each one and then subtracted it from the blank, which was 176.2. And I found the observed rotation. Now I use Biot's law, which has the observed rotation is equal to the specific rotation times the height times the concentration. And I rearranged it. So that way we would solve for the specific rotation. And then I went over here and I just plugged in all the numbers. So alpha, I got the observed rotation times one decimeter, which remember you have to change one from centimeters to decimeters. And then I put in the concentration and I got 51 for the specific rotation. I did the same process for each one, and then I compared the calculated values to the known literature that we looked up. And you can see that they're pretty close. So that means we did a good job when it came to uh, identifying the observed rotation. And then- So for these the, are observed and these are literature. Yep. 64, 66, 79, it's a little bit more. Oh, oh so yeah, yeah. So for sucrose, we got sucrose, that was 51. Known value is 52.7, so that's pretty close. Same with the glucose, 64, 66. Mm -hmm. This one has more of a range. We got 79, and it's in that range. And then the same for fructose. As you notice, fructose is the only negative value. Mm -hmm. 
And then we took the B values for the unknowns, and then we did the same process where we subtracted it from the blank. I got a negative 8.3 for unknown one, and 5.4 for unknown two. And then I plugged them into Biot's law where we arranged to solve for the specific rotation, and I got a negative 83 for the first one, so I am pretty sure that's, a fr that's fructose. And then for number two, we got plus 54, and I'm pretty sure that's sucrose. Okay, now, so we have done the experiment and we have generated some waste and these are all, now we are ready to discard these solutions. So whenever we are going to discard, this is all sugar. So here you can see sucrose, fructose and galactose. These are all sugar. So never, never throw these or spill any bench, otherwise ants will start coming out and it will be sticky everywhere. So always throw this in the aqueous waste. So this is the very very important. Otherwise in the next day you will come and you will see everywhere ants are there in the lab. So be careful and dispose properly this aqueous waste.